When uh, we arrived in, in, at the, uh, the World Championships at Gothenburg in 1995, everything, every uh, preview started and ended with Sonia O'Sullivan. For many people, including many of the international commentators, they felt that she couldn't have escaped the experience of, of Barcelona and 93 without being damaged in some way, having been cheated effectively. We, on the other hand, being paid up members of the O'Sullivan fan club, believed that she could. But yet, I have to admit, the spectacle of her coming off the last bend, full of running, and obviously on her way to the world title, that was one of the truly imperishable memories of, of Irish athletics for me over a period of 50 years. Sonia O'Sullivan is the champion of the world, the first Irish woman to win a world championship gold record. Ireland has a new world champion. I don't know, it was nearly expected and it, again it was a kind of relief to win the World Championships and um, I think I didn't really appreciate it as, mu as much at the time as I do now. Sadly there was a downside to that victory because there was a little incident that got blown up out of all proportion by the press when she'd won the event in dramatic style and she'd begun a lap of honour and her dad John came down to the front of the crowd and handed her an Irish flag. So she gave him back the flag and completed the lap of honour without it. And the press, the Sunday Times in particular, went totally overboard saying that she had been disrespectful to the flag, which was not the case at all. No, I mean, I think, I mean, people are just looking for something bad. Because... I mean, I got quite upset about it because I didn't, um, I didn't mean anything by it. It wasn't like a something that I thought to do. You know, it just kind of was an instinct thing that oh, this is way too heavy, and I've got to run another lap of this track. I don't mean this is a criticism of media, but it's media-generated uh, pressure because she was very proud of her flag, the Irish flag, and she was first and foremost an Irish person who loved her country and raced her heart out for her country. A lot of it is good spirited and, and then every now and again you know you read uh, you can read some articles that someone's written about you or and I've read some written about Sonia that I thought were particularly harsh. You know it's just people see things like they want to see them and get out of it what they want. Sonia carried a huge amount of pressure and public expectations and she carried it with a kind of effortless style which, which puts the great athletes apart from the rest. There were also bad days of course, she didn't always win and in a sense that only enriched the, 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 the reputation growing around her um, because here we saw or in our moments that she could be vulnerable as well as triumphant. Ooh, what's in, here? in the start of '95, I came to Australia for the first time for some training. Just the atmosphere and everything about it was really nice down here. So it was definitely something to look forward to and. I think it's one of those things, once you start it, you just kind of continue it. And, um, you know, that's where we are still today, continuing it, um, that you come down here every winter. When you go as hard at things as Sonia did in 95, 96, it, it's, it's um, eventually you're going to scrape the bottom of the well and, and she did and she just needed to, to settle back and, and realise she didn't need to be trying to break the world record every day and I think in 96 she was ready lots of times but not on the day when she needed to be. 
the Atlanta Olympics was probably a period that she'd rather forget because it all, it all unraveled. There were personal things going on. And there was another problem because Sonia had a kit deal that wasn't the kit deal that the Irish national team had. And she was made to change out of her strip in the stadium before competing to put on the correct one. And so there were a lot of things affecting her mentally in Atlanta that we couldn't possibly understand. To this day, I don't know. I'd love to find the definitive answer. But she didn't run to her potential. She probably trained a little bit too hard. I think maybe if I tried to just win the race, then it might have worked out OK. But because I wanted to make sure I won it and win it by a long way, then I just tried too hard to be way better than everybody else rather than just be a little bit better. I mean, I don't know why I stopped, really. It would have been one of those things where you kind of think, what am I going to do? And it definitely wasn't kind of thought out or anything like that. It was just an instinctive thing to do. It would have been very easy for her as a person to walk away from it. And at times, some of the things that were said, written, and, you know, we all know like that she was written off. But in her head, she wasn't written off. You lose kind of all the mental energy and positive energy that you need to compete and to run well. So um, I definitely had to go away and start all over again and kind of have a clean sheet. I actually met Nick in, first in 1995 when we first came to Australia. We had become close friends. I used to run with him most days. He was very positive and very motivating and encouraging you know, for me to get back and to get back running again. Um, so I think you know, he definitely helped me a lot to get over that disappointment and to look forward. It's a sign of a real champion to have a period where things aren't working out. But rather than just fade off into the sunset, she was able to get back up and suddenly she was a dominant force again. You know, cross country, I always believed that was where I started and that was my first great love. So to find cross country and then to come back to it in 1998, um, it did feel like, you know, I came back to the beginning and um, found, you know, what was the most important thing to me. Look at the quality of the people who win these events, and this was the World Cross Country, and in this hot and dusty environment, in the long cross country and the short course cross country, she won them both. You take your hat off and you say, Sonia O'Sullivan, you're a world champion, and there's no, there's no denying it, you're one of the best there's ever been. Coming off the World Cross Country, I was, you know, very confident and really looking forward to the European Championships. Um, I'd never run 10,000 metres on the track before, but it just seemed like a golden opportunity for me to um, go out there, run my first race and, you know, try and win it. And I ran into a journalist and he asked me, oh, I asked Sonia, I'm a bit worried about Sonia, this could be another bad one. And I said, yeah, I know. I said, what about this girl from Latvia? He said, who's that? I said, oh, this girl, she... She runs 100 miles every week. Oof. So, yeah, she's really good at cross country and she can run the last lap in under 60 seconds. And he said, well, Who's that? She'll win for sure. I said, That's Sonia O'Sullivan. You know, to be able to win that race the way I did gave me a lot of confidence. Um, but going into the 5,000, to me, it was going to be a bonus no matter what I achieved in that race. And, you know, I knew it was going to be difficult to run against Gabriela Zavo, um, but I think as soon as the heats were cancelled and it was a straight final, then it was a little bit easier for me. It was definitely one of those, you know, you run as fast as you can and there's no looking back and, you know, you just hope to get to the line first. And I did and, you know, I was so excited I couldn't believe it, you know, it was, it was like a dream come true, you know, a double-double in the one year. She felt that she had turned the whole thing business around like and in my mind I, I would be sat to saying to her, well, listen, you know, you have to prove nothing out to no one, you know, just wind down now. But she still had something in the back of her head that she wanted to win an Olympic medal.
It's this fine balance between the prepared professional athlete and the charming woman who off the track can manage a family, you know, which is a task that most people would find a full-time job in its own. She manages to juggle these two things in, in a way that I think most women, most people would find, you know, impossible. I think once I realised that I was pregnant, then I kind of worked out how I could make it work. You become a lot more efficient and um, you squeeze a lot more into the short amount of time that you have. She'd get on the bike and she'd do the stuff in the pool and she'd train uh, as an injured athlete normally you could for six weeks for, for nine months. You better go and lie down and have a relax, huh? Then come out and ran really well. Both times after she had the baby she was at a very high level, you know, really quickly. Yeah, it's, it's even more exciting here now. Things are absolutely insane. Paul has stopped. It's a fantastic atmosphere here in Cole Community College. Beside me here, I have Mary O'Connor, who's one of Sonia's neighbours. Mary... I shall never forget September 23rd, 2000. The date is ingrained in my mind. It was a night of athletics that I had never experienced in anything. I've been covering the sport for 50 years and I will never, ever forget the atmosphere in the stadium. It was simply one crescendo after another. What really amazed me was I was right out on the start line and I looked up into the stands and, you know, of all the people in the stands, I picked up my dad was up there, you know, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> like, what's he doing there? And, you know, I was amazed that I could, you know, you could kind of see that in the midst of all this nervousness and getting ready for the Olympic final. I remember I was seeing a bunch of um, Irish Olympic people and she started to drift back through the field at one point and uh, someone, I don't know who it was, uh, John Tracy or Ronnie Delaney, one of those guys sitting behind me grabbed me and, and said, what's going on, what's happening with Sonia? I remember my wife sitting beside me in the stands in Sydney and she said something to me and I said, Joan, Joan, please let me concentrate because I was so focused because I knew this was the litmus test. Was Sonia going to get back into the race? She was now out of the race. She was tailed off 25 yards behind the leading group. And suddenly, whatever happened in the race, she rejigged her tempo, she reignited her mind and she reconnected with the, with the leaders. And from that moment, she was racing for gold. In a way, I couldn't believe it, you know. I, not, I can't believe I'm in this position, you know, when, you know, not, not too long ago, I was, <laughs> I was nearly out of it. So we went into the final lap, and somehow there was a, a huge gap opened up by myself and Gabrielle Azaba down the back straight, two of us together, and going into the final bend, I couldn't believe I was in this position to possibly win. One of Sonia's trademarks was that in 5,000 metres running, she would kick at around 150, 200 metres. And more often than not, it worked. It killed off the opposition. But on this occasion, Zabo, to her eternal credit, refused to be killed. And as you recall, for the last 150 metres, that was, that was drama on a, on a scale that very few of us had seen before. I must confess, the hairs on my arm stood up. It was such an emotional experience for me. We were cheering, roaring, shouting, is she going to make it? Sabo held her off, held her off fractionally. But to my view, that was the most courageous, the total fulfillment of, of Sonia's incredible career. What do you feel? You know, I didn't know. And then I looked up and I knew that, you know, I had to be happy. Um, it was an Olympic medal, it was something I worked hard for a long, long time and to actually have, you know, 
a silver Olympic medal was, you know, it, it was definitely worth its weight in gold to me. I think that will be the image that survives the years when we come to talk about Sonia O'Sullivan. It will be the way she came back from this adversity, looked the impossible in the eye and said, I'll have a go at that. And nobody, but nobody, deserves a medal for it. She's a world champion.